organic schools in. Last video covering the idle circuit. I was talking about the fluid and the air trying to describe uh, without using an apparatus. Uh, this is why I like using an apparatus to do this because I could just show it simply. So I referred to uh, fluid being incompressible fluid and air being compressible fluid, but that's I shouldn't have used the word fluid when I'm talking about the the, the air flow through here is that the air can be compressed okay and the liquid can't be compressed um, keep in mind that the air flow across here and this is, this is another thing I didn't really make clear when we were I said it when we when we were doing the other experiments with the Venturi's that that was constant flowing air and that carburetors differ a bit but I should have mentioned that this is carburetors and so that the air flow is not even and that um, for example, in a four-stroke engine at 1,000 RPM, the valve opens every second revolution, so the air pulses in there, um, and they're considerable pulses of air. It can go from negative to positive pressure, even, and uh, those uh, pulses are about eight hertz, or eight times a second. Two-stroke, double that, 16 times a second, but eight times a second is pretty slow, so you've got a fair amount of pulses of air going through it's not a constant flow so if that's not easy to understand um but i have to make an apparatus but i you know these videos are just performance on them is abysmal hardly justifies doing it uh i know it's the off season northern hemisphere is all outdoors enjoying themselves but uh i put a video up a month ago a handy lathe tool a thousand views the first days and Views drop off pretty quick when you put videos up these days. So a couple of days later, it had about three and a half, four thousand drops off quick. It's still getting numbers, but so I, I know how to make a post a video that, that gets views, but this is terrible. So uh, it's um, and it's not being shared, so I don't think other people will value it. And I spent years, decades, uh, learning this stuff and then learning how it really works. And uh, I started to question whether it's actually got any value anymore to anyone. Anyway, uh, the apparatus uh, here, look, uh, takes time. i got work to do and i got money to make. I run a business. So, yeah, you'll just have to use your imagination. And also I mentioned that this is not the limitations of um, pilot systems by any stretch. There is variations on that. Um, you may have a bypass transfer port that runs flow directly from a pilot fuel jet and the fuel adjustment screw that actually controls only the actual idle position. Uh, but th th that's just a matter of looking through the ports in your engine and exploring um, the various ports and holes and uh, where the outlets and inlets are located and what pressures you ex expect at those points and you'll be able to uh, reverse engineer it, so to speak. I think we'll get on to the uh, variable venturi carbies next. So I just thought I would add those notes about the idle circuit. And like, sorry, I would have just done a, a contraption that had a fuel in the in the in the liquid, a tap, a tap on here, an air tap, a branch, and uh, our tube with our two tubes, and our, or or just one tube we would have needed for that, um, and just showing you the effect of closing that up and how sensitive this would become, um, and just cut through everything, uh, get straight to the point. Um, so all that uh, explanation you didn't really need to know and it was long and boring but um, I'm sorry if the video is not going to perform any better I'm just not going to get out there and uh, freeze my ass off in the shed and make apparatus and then get like 12 views for the moment we'll move on variable venturis is the next note our fixed dimension venturi we spoke about earlier on a topic to do with the venturi effect as the airspeed goes up and down uh, now that does the dimensions of the venturi were were fixed bit of a different story when we get variable venturi which is a slide type carburetor the most basic slide type carburetor is one that has a cable or mechanical linkage that draws the slide up and down it has no butterfly throttle and in doing so as it lifts this it is varying the actual venturi size now 
There's another type of carburetor called a constant velocity carburetor. We call it that. Uh, so what I'll do is just show you the difference between the two. The constant velocity carburetor still has a butterfly throttle to signal increase of uh, engine speed. And the CV carby has a butterfly throttle. And the slide is actuated by a diaphragm instead. So when the butterfly throttle opens, and it's got a, a similar um, idle circuit that I showed you before on the butterfly, when that opens, goes through transition, the vacuum is uh, ported into the inside of the, the slide area and um, it sucks the slide up or ported to above the slide area depending on the carburetor. Now the Japanese ones have a rubber diaphragm. Uh, some old, very old ones, SU carburetors, have like a metal to metal arrangement with a uh, actually an oil damper in the center. Horrible. Uh, the Japanese ones have a diaphragm and a spring. Um, but essentially what it is to do is to ensure that the slide moves up with a corresponding increase in the airspeed and thus at the nozzle here where the fuel is okay that's not fuel, that's the idle okay um, so that's that idle circuit in a constant velocity carby would be downstream near the throttle plate in this case it's uh, next to the slide because it's a manual slide type but in the constant velocity carby if the slide goes up and down according to very to airspeed it means that the velocity is here um, is intended to remain the same so as the velocity increases in in the tube in the larger tube either side of it okay the velocity at there changes the velocity at there remains the same if the venturi size changes or the velocity changes if the venturi size is fixed in the case of this carburetor so the benefit it is as as i mentioned is this carburetor has got the venturi effect that that as the engine speed or air speed goes lower it doesn't work as well whereas this one with varying um, the change in um, air speed um, has a changing of the venturi effect so the venturi effect can work as well at lower speeds as it can work at higher speeds so we don't get as much of a drop of the venturi effect as air speed drops uh, and that's um, one thing that makes slight carburetors pretty good. Constant velocity carburetor here, butterfly throttle to signal. Vacuum is ported to the top side of this diaphragm down in this little hole down here on the vacuum side. Okay, so when the throttle plate opens, this is atmosphere, slides all the way down. Vacuum hits the port, sucks a vacuum inside here on the diaphragm, okay, lifts it up against the spring. All right, throttle valve, throttle valve shuts. We've got no vacuum here, the spring pushes the slide back down. And obviously, being a static port there, it gets a flow across there, but it also gets mostly the, the signal vacuum from the intake to actually draw it upwards. Now, I will just show you one little point to look at is in a manual slide carburetor where the carburetor is connected by a cable and it's actually signaling up on the top left hand side here. Have a look, have a close look at the difference between the bottom of the slide of that one and the bottom of slides of these. Okay, this is different. Now, when I go back to the other image, just note that this has got an opening here, but it doesn't slope, okay? And it's got a, a wall here, all right? Now they have two express purposes. This is our manual slide carburetor, where a linkage or cable is attached to here, and that's our means of actually signaling. So we have always got vacuum right up to this point at idle. Hence, our pilot jet is down at the edge of this edge of the slide.
Okay, so we get the Venturi effect across there and across here. We get airspeed as well, so it's drawn out here. So the bypass hole and the main pilot, all right? Now, have a look at the slide. The dashed lines indicate the inside of the slide. And note the cutaway. Now that cutaway looks like it's actually like, a, like an angle of the Venturi, okay? Like the angle of the Venturi effect that we spoke about earlier on in previous videos. But it's not, okay? It's not an angle as you saw in the previous images. It's actually just like a little wall, okay? The difference is, is that that little wall there is basically simply exposing the aperture or the opening in the front. And it determines the slope of it, if it's a higher cutaway or a lower cutaway, is simply determining how much of this side is exposed to open air and how much this side, okay? So if the cutaway is lower, that will be richer, but that is very much limited to only certain engine speeds, low engine speeds, because the higher you lift this up in the bore, the less effect, okay, this cutaway has on the fuel mixtures. And the fuel mixtures move away from the cutaway to the needle, which is the next fuel metering system we will have a look at. But that explains... Uh, slide carburetors and constant velocity type carburetors and a little bit of a difference there i think that will do for today we're up uh, around our 10 minute mark and that's about as long as people can stand watching videos if that so we may be back tomorrow i don't know i'll think about it i'll watch my view count and see if anyone shares these videos and we'll see what is this well that's me that's, uh, yeah, I should get getting another 30 years ago now. That's me down the racetrack with my 1000cc Phyllis replica Katana Superbike. Slaves down to 1000 from 1100 who uh, suit the maximum capacity regulations. Very much, uh, yeah, chopped lighting and whatnots. But, yeah, carburetors. These are the legendary. Keyhein CR Racing Carburetors, 31 mils. Beautiful, beautiful. Look onto it. I bought it, it had 33 mil Keyhein's on it, and it was wild. And uh, he wanted the carbies, so I said, all right, well, I'll buy a set. Off down to Mick Owens, 750 bucks later. And... Uh, I spoke to the mechanic down there and he said uh, they tried the 33s on another bike and it was, yeah, wild. Uh, tracks like Calder and Winton are the local tracks that I went to, um, 31s were better. So I bought some 31s, but uh, yeah, beautiful carburetors. Now, these, um, I talked about uh, choke systems yet, no, I don't know. Uh, these don't have a butterfly choke in them and they don't have a plunger choke in them. They have another interesting way to start the engine, and you've got to do this when it's cold or hot. They've got a little push button on there, you know, like your old dad's lawnmower, and you push the little button until the fuel dribbles out from the carburetors. And you've got to do that cold or hot to start it. So when you run off the corner and you stall your bike, it's almost like... Putting, putting your hands down each side underneath the tank and locating each finger on each button, two on this side, pinky there, pinky there, and the inside and inside, holding all four buttons down and waiting until you see Avgas 105 dribbling out the bottom of all your carbs, and then you've got to push start yourself back on the track. And I've got to tell you, man, time, time just stands still as you just watch everyone just ride off into the distance. That's the one downside about them. But... Yeah, smooth ball, beautiful carburetor. Beautiful, legendary carburetor, I might add. As for carburetors, uh, anyone who's ever owned a carbur set of carburetors like this, because these are, these are infinitely adjustable by every definition compared to a, a stock street carby, um, because they're competition carby. Anyone who's owned a pair of these would never say something like, oh, carbies are shit. 
In fact, anyone who ever says that Carvey's a shit, I struggle to accept as a person who knows how Carvey's actually work, or how they know how they work properly. Um, certainly not the something uh, uh, a skilled mechanic would say. Uh, if you ever hear a mechanic saying that, maybe they're not. Maybe they're just a village idiot. So, yeah, beautiful carvies, beautiful carvies. It was a wild machine, that bike. It's the only motorcycle I owned that you could light up the back tyre in every gear. We got her up to about 149 brake horsepower on a Dyno Dynamics Dyno. And the back wheel kept breaking away. We had a couple of blokes standing on the back too. Yeah, wild days. Wild boy. Young fool. Anyway, yeah, I wouldn't exchange those days for anything. Okay, well, that'll do for today. Mechanic out.